Now that is what we need to see more and more, for people to make the connection between these practices and their situation as individuals, as communities, and as countries. And just one example, you remember, I'm sure you remember, this is, this is Paris, you know, uh, some months ago there was the fire at Notre Dame. The whole world was watching. And I recall almost immediately after it happened, there were several offers on the table of funds, right? Mm -hmm. From rich people to fix it. All very well. But there were also questions that started getting asked. <clears throat> Um, how much money does the state actually have to do this kind of work? You know, do we have to depend on charity from some good-hearted rich people? Suppose the state had enough money to put programs into cultural heritage. Could this have been prevented? Maybe some preventive measures, right? Which cannot be recaptured even with, even with the reconstruction. So that, for me, maybe for France, is a representation of what we're talking about. That the challenge is about resources, public resources, not finding their way into public coffers. And the mechanisms that are used by corporations, multinational corporations, but sometimes also rich individuals to employ those mechanisms and the laws, the policies, the systems that enable that, whether at a national level or at an international level. So what we see increasingly is that there is an imbalance. And as has been said, this imbalance in this architecture around financial systems has existed for a long time. But fortunately today, there are many more ways of putting a mirror, an image on that. For developing countries, the dilemmas are just as bad as sometimes worse. Because what we're really talking about is not just the challenges that um, ICRIT is, fo is focusing on around international corporate taxation, but also really issues to do with the structure of the economy, with the model of economic development, the model of development, which has a direct correlation to the state of society. And so we see in the South, in Africa, I'm from Uganda, increasingly we have seen over the past 30, 40 years, because of policies around, uh, you know, rooted in neoliberalism, we have seen the rollback of the role of the state. So more and more deregulation. And as there's been increasing shackles, I would say, on citizen, citizen action, capacity to organize and associate more and more deregulation for large business entities. So the cost of this for our countries is huge. And you see this, I see this um, in labor. You know, I see this in uh, health programs, in education programs, 